California State Route 17 is a mountainous four-lane freeway with an average of 60,000 vehicles per day. Due to the frequent wet conditions of the roadway surface and the speed at which vehicles travel, many wet weather collisions were occurring at this location. After an analysis of the collisions, it was believed that vehicles were losing traction and sliding into the concrete median barrier. In keeping with Caltrans policy to reduce both the number and severity of collisions, the department was ready to try something new. Fortunately, the Federal Highway Administration was conducting 20 nationwide tests using a product called High Friction Surface Treatment, or HFST. This location on State Route 17 was an ideal candidate as a test location. This is a tailgate safety meeting at the project location that the contractor and Caltrans personnel held to ensure safe work practices while the HFST project was being installed. This is the beginning of the project. Notice a dynamic curve warning sign that was placed early in 2012. This little cart sized robot is called Robotex and was invented by Transtech, who was accomplishing the pre and post research testing. Basically, Robotex provides a 4 inch wide texture profile over the entire length of the surface rather than just spot measurements. Here is David Merritt of Transtech Group who is taking pre photographs of the roadway surface prior to placing the HFST. Notice in the background, Robotex is generating a profile in the right wheel path using a line laser. This is the circular track meter, CTM, and the dynamic friction tester, DFT, which are both mounted on a removable deck located off the rear of the minivan. The circular track meter reports a mean profile depth, while the dynamic friction tester reports a friction value for various slip speeds ranging from 80 to 0 km per hour. These small pads are made from the same compounds as a rubber tire to closely simulate the existing friction condition of the roadway. Notice how it rotates in a circular direction. This is a grinding operation to remove oil and paint that would retard the polyester's resin's ability to adhere to the roadway surface. This particular grinder was a bit undersized for the amount of grinding that was needed to be accomplished. Here, the grinders are trying to remove a thermoplastic traffic arrow. Finally, Compressed air was used to clean the roadway surface and remove any grinding dust and loose particles that had gathered during grinding operations. Here we are showing quick bond polymers representative experimenting with different percentages of peroxide to manipulate the polyester resin's cure time depending on temperatures. These are buckets which contain the polyester resin which the contractor will be dumping out onto the roadway surface. A spreader bar is also available, but we did not use one here. Now the contractor is spreading the polyester resin on the roadway surface with squeegees. Notice how easily and completely the roadway surface is covered. This piston regulates the mixture of peroxide or other additives with the polyester resin to manipulate cure time depending on surface temperature. This piston is located on the mixing truck. Now it is time to place the high friction aggregate called calcined bauxite. In this case, the bauxite is being distributed by a spreader bar and truck. The bauxite is being applied just a few moments after the contractor placed the polyester resin. We noticed if the bauxite was placed unevenly, the polyester resin would wick up into the bauxite at different rates, producing a slight rumble in the roadway surface. As you can see, there is no required way to place the bauxite. Sometimes, when the bauxite spreader truck was empty, small areas were finished by hand out of a bucket. This is a close-up view of the calcined bauxite. 100% of the bauxite will pass through a number 4 sieve. Bauxite is a byproduct of manufacturing aluminum, is very hard, and is abrasion and polish resistant. 
It is imported from China, Guyana, or India, which is why it is expensive. Here, we just wanted to show the proximity of the whole operation. It took approximately two and a half hours to put down a single layer of 950 feet of the HFST product. After the polymer resin has dried, which in this case is about an hour and a half, a sweeper truck was utilized to pick up the loose and extra bauxite to reuse on the next layer of this project. QuickBond had their polyester resin delivered to the project site in these pods. The pods were lifted and the resin poured into the mixing truck. The high friction surface treatment was placed directly over open graded asphalt. Because the first layer of the polyester resin filled the gaps in the open grade, a second layer of HFST was placed over the first to ensure the product had a good bond and service life. This is the existing open grade asphalt surface that is approximately four years old. As the camera pans, you can see the transition to the HFST surface and this is the final HFST surface. You can visually see the rough texture. Mike Moravec of the Federal Highway Administration takes an initial walkthrough of the project on day three. We will be working in the number one lane, or the lane closest to the median on this night. Caltrans uses California Test Method 342 for testing the friction value of asphalt and bridge decks. The machine is brought to the project location by this van. This is one of the four working units statewide. The machine is winched out of the van and then placed on a hitch at the rear of the van to hold it in place. After it is set up, five locations are tested at 25 feet apart and the average value is tabulated for the friction value. Once the wheel reaches the correct speed, it is dropped approximately an eighth of an inch onto the roadway surface, which has been cleaned, and then prepped with glycerin to simulate wet roadway conditions. Notice here that the sliding indicator has traveled past the usable scale of the friction machine, and therefore the friction value of the HFST is larger than the CTM342 can register. The Caltrans tester here is attempting to correlate what the value should be had the scale been larger. It took approximately an hour to accomplish one friction test of five locations. This is FHWA's newest friction testing unit acquired from Dynatest for approximately $250,000. It's called the Dynatest Friction Tester Model 6875H. It is a continuous friction testing device that reports a friction value every one foot. This is a view from under the tester of the hydraulically actuated wheel that is engaged while driving usually at 40 miles per hour. No lane closure is required when accomplishing this friction test. Now we are inside the truck and watching while the computer is booting up. This is the screen the user sees while conducting a friction test. In the upper left hand corner of the screen is the speed of the truck. The middle display is the total distance traveled in feet and on the right is the friction value of the roadway surface. The test is initiated on the existing open graded asphalt. When you see the value jump up, that's when we crossed into the high friction surface treatment area. The friction value stays over 1.0 until we transition out of the high friction surface treatment and then settles back down once we travel back onto the open graded asphalt surface. This is a final drive through showing the finished product after day three of construction and prior to applying the final striping. Final striping can be applied as soon as the polyester resin is cured. In this case, the lanes were open for traffic approximately two and a half hours after the last of the calcined bauxite was placed. Thank you for watching. We hope you have enjoyed this short video on the application of high friction surface treatment.